Hey all, Steve from Guitar Niche here. We're going to look at replacing a rather uh, sketchy shimmed nut with a proper one. Okay, so the process will be milling out the uh, excess glue and stuff and thinning out this blank I have, which is it's left over from another botch job that I did. Yes, I make mistakes. We all make mistakes, but you know, don't throw that crap away because it might be useful down the road. Anyway, you can see that uh, the replacement, the string spacing is actually exactly the same as, as the original, but the, the width is too much. So I'm going to mill that down or grind it or sand it down as it were and fit it to the slot and we're going to put a new nut in there so on with the show first things first we're going to get an approximation of what the actual width is of the original here so i'll use my handy dandy c style calipers here and it says one 1.82 inches so that's what we're going to shoot shoot for and that's rough because there's you know crap on the face and stuff like that i will wind up doing it by eye anyway and we'll see how this works out uh as we get further into it but first we're gonna clean up this uh this slot okay so i got my quarter inch uh chisel here knock that out I gotta be whenever you're doing something like this you got to be really careful of the of the binding on the edge because on some instruments if that's loose you'll just wind up popping it off or you make a, a problem that much worse so anyway take it for what it's worth let's give that a second pass and you can see some of that junk is just if it's not the same color of the wood it shouldn't be there. Simple as that. Now that's pretty clean. But it's not as clean as it could be. So, last little bit of uh, business with that is going to be my trusted triangular file. This thing is... is it, you can get these everywhere and anywhere. But because of the nature of it, the triangular uh, geometry of it, it gets super tight into the corners. Bottom flush, vertical flush. My gosh, doesn't get any better than that. Bottom flush, vertical flush. And it just knocks out those corners super square. It's great. It's a good slot. Okay, if it's not totally true 90 degrees, I can still compensate for it with the, with the nut. Speaking of which, I'm going to thin this down so that it fits the slot properly, and we'll see how that goes. Be back in a moment. Well, back to our handy dandy nut job. So I thinned out this first blank which is actually a recycled piece from another another job and when i went to test it the problem was it's too low on the treble side which is fine that's why i had another one as backup it happens okay so at this point what i've done is i've thinned it out i cleaned up the slot a little bit more too so the dimensions on this one are going to be a little bit uh, more appropriate for this particular this new uh, resizing you might say okay and at this point I simply have the the width thickness you might say uh, set 
and the treble side is marked here. That way I always know where the, uh, which, which is the orientation, or which way it's oriented, I should say. And to fit it further, I'm gonna leave a little bit of hangover on the base side. And I'll just score up on the treble side. And along the face. Okay, I'm not going to use the fret to, or any of those other tricks to uh, figure out where the strings might line up. But as you can see, again, it's it's kind of shy on the on the treble side. So what I think happened here was that whoever like did the previous work, they milled out. A lot of the stuff on the on the treble side anyway this is how stuff goes but so it's a custom nut and you know I'm not going to try to level out the, the slot because it's just making a bad situation worse okay but my concern right now is am I gonna have enough room I like it when it creaks that's that's a good nut. Okay, this is why I left the uh, the strings loose. So here's the first string. I'm just gonna eyeball that to make sure I've got enough purchase. Yeah, yeah, there's air there. There's a good bit of air. So all I'm looking for, I just want to make sure that there's enough height here, so that I don't get all the way into milling this thing out, fashioning it, and then I go I wind up with the same problem. Which surprised me. I mean, this was a fine nut. I mean, you can look at the dimensions and it looks great, but the slot is kooky. All right, and I know that nut is seated because I trued up the bottom, I trued up the sides, everything. I trued up the slot. I didn't think it would be necessary. I'm just looking at the back edge here. Maybe I, it's just one of these things that that gets overlooked until you you don't really suspect it until you you actually see it. Okay, the nut is in the slot, but it's definitely low on the treble side. Whether you know that whether that's factory or not, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of kooky. Anyway, this is the stuff we get to deal with, and this is part of problem solving. The next step is to get these sides here. The sidewalls uh, in line, married with the uh, edge of the fretboard. Okay, and uh, I'll take this, sand it down, and we'll have that. Be right back. Now I have the the nut is roughed in. It's really nice and tight to the to the sides here. Now the fun part: new notches. And if you can see it. This is actually a pretty shallow um, level above the fretboard. I mean, really shallow, but it'll work out just fine because the frets are fairly low compared to, you know, some some more modern materials or not materials, but modern fret wire, which tends to be a little higher. So visually, these slots will wind up looking equal. Whether you cut your slots from, you know, equal centers or equal on center, you know, string centers versus uh, the, diff the, the, the distance between the strings, apples and oranges. As long, if it, as long as it looks right, that's all that matters. All I'm doing is just notching that so that the strings will have something to sit in. Anyway, the, I gotta true up the bottom of the nut just a hair so that it doesn't knock around in that slot. And relieve the hard edge. There we go. Good. Good. I mean, we're talking like uber microns, right? <laughs> Anywho. So there's that job. So that's a roughed in nut and that'll do just fine. Now we get to 
hit on down to the other side, the saddle is destroyed. It's none, it's just, a, it's not gonna work. Simple as that. I'm going to extract this very carefully. There we go. You gotta be really, really careful with these these joints here, the, the, the actual, I mean, you can't, you can't be wrenching on this back and forth all the time. It'll just, it'll just destroy the, the connection. So you gonna be real careful about that, really delicate around it. And just gonna pry out this saddle carefully. I've seen these things come apart and then actually go back together <laughs> as far as because these there's the crystals that that are are in the actual uh rail there like there's a copper strip that goes over, over top of that and sometimes it gets loose sometimes the crystals get kind of they get happy fun times anyway this this is a mess well, the plan is i'm going to fashion an equivalent a saddle that will have the same width this way depth basic dimensions and mill out a void equidistant on both both faces here at the bottom the idea is i'm gonna create uh a bottom slot, if you would, that will fill in or fit the carriage. Yes, it's a pain in the butt, but it's problem solving, and that's what the that's what the video is all about. So I gotta check check for test for echo. Well, we know. That that is active as far as signal goes. I mean, we're getting a yeah, we're good. Once there's once there's uh... yeah, good. Once there's continuous pressure on top of that, it'll be it'll be just fine. Okay. Anyway, so we know the pickup's working. That's great. On to the next step. Which is... Finding a blank we can work with. I took the pickup out. Just uh, for easier access uh, to the slot here. And unfortunately, I didn't have a piece of uh, graphite. Uh, the right thickness to, to work with. But I do have, as you can see, a piece of bone that I was able to fashion a blank out of, okay? So that fits nice, okay? Good width, rounded ends and everything. Piece of cake. The challenge from this point here is to turn this into a functioning saddle that is this thing, okay? And here's what I got in mind. I measured the depth or how much room in the slot that this the saddle or the the uh, pickup carriage actually takes up, so down inside there, and that came out to roughly eighty thou. So I will put a shim in there in the slot, eighty thou, to, which is going to simulate the height that the pickup takes, and. From that point, I'm going to treat this as if it were just a plain old replacement saddle. And I'll, you know, I'll fashion, uh, I'll put the radius on the top, I'll, co I'll compensate it, I'll set the height, and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, I still have the old strings on, so, so I can check stuff as I go. I know I'm going to be in the ballpark, no problem. Then finally, the last part will be taking 
a minor, uh, actually excavating a recess into the bottom on both sides so that we have this effect here. Okay, it'll be straight across and it'll work just fine. Just fine. Be no problem whatsoever. And it's only, well, it's easy enough to measure. I'll take my calipers to it later when I, when I mill it out. But it's, it's not very much. I would say at, at eyeball, might be eh, maybe 20 thou, something like that. Rough estimate on both sides, that is. Okay, so 20 thou on one side, 20 thou yeah. Anyway, so that's the plan, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, wish me luck. Cheers. Okay, so I have some compensation and some height adjustment on the new saddle the pickup is not installed yet just checking out uh, how things are making out now at this end at the nut uh, I got the strings back on remember these are the old strings and I can get real close to where I want to wind up without having to sacrifice a brand new set of strings it's that simple so I did the uh, the rough uh, cuts for the for the nut, and uh, got them pretty close. Once the instrument's under tension, uh, things are, are going to change, and I have I have to anticipate that. So I leave a you know an appropriate amount of uh, air under the strings here, okay. And the next step is. I'm going to I find that as I as I did a real quick test you might say there's uh, we're, we're now I'm, I'm starting to focus on the action part of things you know how things are gonna finally wind up keep in mind our very last step will be milling that uh, that relief into the into the bottom of the uh, of the new saddle for uh, to work with the with the pickup but I want to get the strings a little bit tighter. The, these are, <laughs> the, this particular gauge is nines for acoustic, like super light, super light. So it's like electric gauge on, on acoustic. Cause the guy, he's, that's what he likes. That's, that's, he's got some, you know, some phys physical, um, issues that that he has to work around and, and we're, we're you know this is what he needs to work with so we're gonna we're gonna make it happen for him so he wants it to play as light as possible with those light strings on and that that's gonna be a challenge but we'll make it happen not a problem so at this point I'm gonna take the saddle down just a hair more I still have the 80 thou um, shim underneath that and then the final step will be as I as I mentioned uh, uh, relieving the bottom for the for uh, the, the pickup system, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then a final cleanup and a new set of strings and some final, final, final adjustments. Incidentally, I will leave a little bit of extra. Let's say I'm going to nibble away a little bit more than I need to as far as height when I relieve the bottom. What I'm what I'm trying to say here. I'm gonna go for this depth, but a few thou more. So I'll get it, you know, just a little bit, a little bit higher than that. And, and uh, you know, give myself some, uh, some oopsie room, you might say. Okay, adjustment room, really. Okay, well, we'll see how this works out. All right, so I got my little jig set up here with my Dremel tool. Made a little fence, set the, uh, the depth of the notch I want to create with a little eighth inch bit there milling bit of some kind I'm not sure what the name is but um, did a couple little test runs with uh, a similar thickness plastic piece now plastic is gonna mill differently but I was just testing it for depth and, and you know just getting it in the ballpark and then I have a piece of bone here which is the uh, same material 
and did uh, a couple adjustments and tested out the the amount of material being removed, etc., and all the dimensions. Now, if anything, it, it, it might be shy. I might not have, uh, I might not get the, the depth I want right off the bat. I should, I should say like the depth should be fine, but the, 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 the finished width might be a little oversight. I'd rather, I'd rather be over than, than under, you know, anyway, cause I want to, I want to, um, work towards that without, uh, introducing slop. Okay. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Well, here's our final result. If I pull this out gently, you can see there's a notch there on the end. That corresponds to the notch at the end of the, on the base side here of the original. Uh, and that's to get around a little bead of solder. And as I pop that in there, I'll just locate that there's also what i did notice is there's a plastic film in there which as i kept working with it started to deteriorate so that's an insulation film and i really want to make sure that that doesn't get disturbed okay so as you can see Once we get a little bit of pressure on this, I tested it. Uh, I just plugged it literally, you know, not, not installing it. I just plugged it into the electronics and tested this. And it's fine. Works great. What I mentioned previously is that I left myself a little bit of wiggle room here. So there's this fine gap here. Okay, so I have what looks like to be about maybe 20, 25 thou, if I need it, to, to lower it. Raising it, of course, is not going to be a problem because it's just a matter of a shim, which, you know, is not ideal. But, you know, we're, we're working around a, a problem here. So, anyway, that should work out just fine. We'll get it installed into the instrument, uh, taking out the shims first, okay? and see where we wind up, okay? Worked like a champ. Back in a minute. All right, so we got the, the saddle is in. It's in the, it's on top of the pickup. I got the strings in. Pretty much at pitch. These are still the old strings because I like to be cheap and conservative. And uh, I still have to, you know, fix up the cabling and stuff. But this is just a, tech, a test for, you know, accuracy and, and everything. And I got to say, these strings are just crazy light. Anyway, this is a, a test for accuracy. And this is nuts. I mean, 9 gauge on an acoustic. I've done 10s before, but I've never done 9 gauge. This is this is what's gonna this is what's gonna go on there. It's this is <laughs> it's pretty interesting. But I'm also checking for pickup operation. Quiet. Good and quiet. The tracking of the pickup and everything is is really good, so I, I know it's um, it's properly seated against the uh, uh, the pickup strip and and all that good stuff. I need a little. Bit
bit of teeny tiny adjustment here and there, but uh, really it's just a matter of uh, putting that last shade of lipstick on this pig, and we'll call it a day. This was an interesting job. Not my first rodeo, but it was uh, compounded with a lot of issues. I wound up doing a partial refret, first four frets, because the, the ones that were in there were, were just trash. They were, they had to come out. They weren't, let's say, done very well to begin with. And the nut had to be extracted, which also was problematic because it had been shimmed. And the, uh, the nut shelf itself had been excavated improperly. Hate to hack on people, but this makes direct replacement parts almost impossible this is why we have to custom make you know pieces and stuff and then finally i had to uh, custom build a a saddle for these takaminis takamine whatever whichever you prefer the g series anybody that knows these instruments knows that these saddles are an absolute pain in the butt absolute <laughs> <laughs> pain in the butt. I can't I can't stress that enough. But I've had to replace these before and instead of just ordering a part or something like that, it's actually not that hard to recreate it. You just gotta put the time in. It's it's you know just a little bit of milling and you're fine. <laughs> and it turned out just great. Uh, as always, play loud, have fun, have a great day. <laughs> And uh, like and subscribe. Read the resources in the description below. There's all sorts of great stuff down there. As always, have a great day.